Hello everyone, today we're going to work on our supply and demand analysis as we did in class. I'm going to create a 3D clustered column chart. In class we've done 3D custom, uh, clustered column charts and we've done regular clus clustered column charts. Uh, we're going to do our pivot chart and pivot table and we're going to do our slicer as well. So let's get to it. We need to figure out our gap between the room demand and the room so supply. So let's go ahead and do that. We take the room demand and subtract the room supply. And I can't fill this because obviously I'm going to ruin my title here on the lower table. So I'm going to just do a control C or I can do pin, uh, right click and then control V for paste or right click and paste. And we need to figure out our RevPAR growth. As you'll recall, we take the RevPAR for 2017, subtract RevPAR for 2016 and divide it by 2016. You might also recall that we need to put the subtraction in parentheses in this case because if we didn't, it would do uh, H5 divided by H5 first, and we don't want that at all. We want G5 minus H5 and then all divided by H5. Once again, we do Control C and then Control V, and because I was working on this earlier, it happened to be already formatted for percentages, but likely in your case it will not. So don't forget to format it properly. Now we're going to go ahead and do our pivot table. So we'll go to Insert, Pivot Table, and we'll do it in a new worksheet. See, new worksheet, existing worksheet. And one thing I didn't do was highlight the area that I wanted to work with. We don't care about all of Canada, we just want to do the provinces here. So now I go back to insert, pivot table, sorry, new worksheet. There we go. You'll recall from the instructions that the provinces will go in the rows in this case and the supply and the demand will go in the values. So now we've got our pivot chart, our pivot table rather, and we want to ensure that it doesn't say row labels, we want it to say province. We want to make sure that all of these are formatted properly for percentages. Now that we change it to a percentage, we lost some decimal points, so let's add some decimal points by using this button here. To take away, you would do this. To add, you take this. Okay, so now we want to add our slicer. So I'm going to highlight the provinces right down uh, and, and highlight all the, um, rather, highlight the titles and all the provinces, not the total. And we're going to go to insert, and our slicer is right over here. And we're just going to click on province. Now we've got our slicer. Keep in mind, if you ever wanted to change the colors of your pivot table or chart, you can do that up here. Now we're going to add our clustered column or our, our uh, 3D clustered 3D chart. So now insert and um, pivot chart over here. And we want it in the existing worksheet, but one thing I realized I didn't do, I didn't highlight uh, what I want in my chart. So now that's highlighted. I'm going back to pivot chart. And we want a 3D clustered column chart. So I'm clicking on that. Now I'm going to want to do some uh, some formatting to this. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I want to get rid of my um, my lines here, so I'm just going to double click on the lines. Oh, well, I'll close that. Um, double click on the line. No lines. You'll notice everything disappeared here. And let's say I 
didn't want these um, columns this color. So if I click on on this, every all of these will um, be highlighted. Okay, and then um, if I click on it again, only one will be. So you can vary the colors of all of them if you want. Similarly, if I click on the other column here, all of these will be highlighted. If I click on one again, just one will be. But um, if, if you are having trouble with this and you're not clicking what you want, um, just click outside of the chart and click again. But anyway, I'm going to uh, go in here and double click on all the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the first column here. And you'll notice what comes up here, Format Data Series. And you might also remember that if you click on the pale, you will um, have uh, various options. You can change the border color if you want, which would be the outside of the, the columns. Or you can char uh, change um, the whole color. So uh, what we'll do, you can actually insert images too if you wanted. But um, we're going to actually insert an image into the, the whole uh, chart area after. So um, I will change this to black. Why not? There we go. And for this one, I want to change it. Oh, that's just going to change the one. There we go. Just make sure you're got highlighted what you want to work on. I'll change this to green. Okay. Now, why don't we... Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. So, depending on the size of your chart that comes in, you might find your your uh, province names are like this. If that's the case, you can just make it a little bit larger. Or, you know, you, you might be asked to put your um, labels in a different orientation. In other words, maybe you'll, you'll uh, want it to, to be vertical. So if that's the case, you just um, click on all of them here. Just click on the outside. Now you'll notice that Axis Options is coming up and you go to text options and sometimes you might forget which which one you want to um, or which one you need to click on just click on this one and you can change the orientation of the text if you want to but that's really not what I want so I'm going to go back to horizontal now we'll just make this a little bit larger so you can see Oops. Okay, so we want to add an image and recently we've been putting maps like a map of Canada in here. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll notice if I click on that, that's the plot area. So the image that I'm going to put in is just going to be inserted here. If I click on this area, it says format chart area. So it's actually going to go in mostly everywhere. So we're going to click on picture or te texture fill and my map of Canada automatically comes up just because I've been working with this lately. But uh, most of the time you'll have to go a step further and go into insert and find an image from a file or uh, in this case, Bing. And we're going to, uh, you know what, I don't like this map of Canada, so I'm going to find another one. And why don't we use this one? All right. This one's a little bit busy. Let's let's pick another one. Okay, so you might recall that uh, if we change the transparency right here, we will be able to see our columns better. There you go. So in this case, I went to about 69%. So now, another thing I want to show you, notice what's coming up here, sidewall as I click here. 
And if I click here, not click rather, but uh, I'm just moving my mouse. This says back wall. So if I clicked on back wall, that'll just change this area here. And other charts that might say uh, plot area. And if I click here, actually, there you go. That's plot area. And then if I click all the way out here, that'll be my chart area. So that's what we originally did. We changed the chart area. And But one thing that didn't come up within the chart area is um, the side wall. There we go. So I'm finding my side wall here and I'm double clicking on this and I want to show you something. We're going to put the same picture in there. The, the, the same picture automatically came up. And similarly, I can change the transparency. It already is the same, but maybe in this one, since it's not interfering with any of the columns, I'm going to uh, increase, or rather uh, decrease the transparency so it's more visible. So there you go. That's just another uh, area you can put images. So that's uh, about all I wanted to show you today. Thank you for listening and have a great evening.